a lot of times we look at this, uh, we have a phrase that we use in our business called now and later money. Like the now money is what I'm about to close this week. Like the now money is what I'm going to close this month. The later money is based on the activities that I'm also doing this week that I'm also doing this month that is set, setting me up for the money that will come later. You have to do both. You have to have the now activities and the later. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! Happy New Year. We are one week in to 2020. I can't imagine the number of uh, cheesy analogies to 2020 and having vision this year that are going to play out. It's going to get really, really really tiring, frustrating, but hey, if it gets you more clear, by all means, use it. But this is episode 151 of the Sales Wolves podcast, and and really what I want to talk to you about today is the goals that you've hopefully set, um, the plan that you've hopefully put in place uh, to make 2020 the best year of your life. And, and I say hopefully, but I want to back up and say, we're a weekend. So if you haven't gone through the process of really setting your goals for this year, if you haven't gone through the process of really using that 2020 vision, getting clear on what you want to ultimately have happen this year, then just do it now. Don't wait till next year. It's not too late. Go ahead and put those plans in place in writing and then put them to action. But what I want to focus today's episode on is for those of you that that have you've put together a plan uh it may be daily activities that you're going to do this year meditating working out eating right you know how many calls are you going to make a day how many appointments are you going to set a day how many whatever you sell are you going to sell today and you know first week first couple of days you're just riding high you're excited but we all know what can happen, which is you slip and you fall and you go back to the ways that you have always done things. You go back to the ways that you did uh, the things that you did last year that didn't create the success maybe that you wanted. And you guys have heard me say this a lot. Like my personality, I'm a very all in or all out kind of guy. And so as I talk to you, I'm, I'm talking to myself as well. I think that that's important. Because I, like many of you, can get into this mindset that, well, I put these plans in place, uh, these things that I was going to do, and, and crap, I've, it's been three days and I haven't done it. And you could potentially make a decision to abandon those plans that you put in place, to abandon those goals that you set for yourself all because you just slipped for a couple of days or maybe even a week, or maybe you didn't even start on those things that you said that were important for you to ultimately have the best year of your life. And what I want you to get out of this podcast episode is a different mindset that just because you slipped, just because you fell back into your old ways, doesn't mean you can't pick right back up where you left off or that you can't start now even though it's not January one, you know, the idea that goals and benchmarks and plans have to be based on the calendar is ridiculous. Like if you're a person that on December 12th was saying on January 1st, I'm going to do this, then you need to be aware of that weakness in your mindset because that is a weak mindset to think that you have to wait for any date on the calendar to start doing the things that you ultimately know you should be doing to get you to where you want to go. But let's take that off the table and really talk about today of what does it look like to be on track? And then ultimately how do we get back on track? So the most important thing you can do is have goals, but you need to get, 
extremely clear and specific with those goals. A lot of you that are listening or watching to this or watching this podcast are in sales. It is a sales based podcast. We talk about everything, but it all kind of correlates back to sales. And there's no better occupation, there's no better career, there's no better thing that you can do in your life to be able to play right into the goals and benchmarks that you set for yourself. So if we just say, let's just take income, for example. This year, 2020, I wanna make X. I wanna make 250 grand this year. I wanna make 100 grand this year. I wanna make 500 grand, whatever that is. You need to reverse engineer that amount of money into the quarterly, monthly, weekly, and even daily activities that will take to get you there. So I'll give you a prime example um, in the field that I'm in, which is insurance. And hopefully those that are in different industries, you can take your specific business and relate and to be able to implement this process. So with insurance, you know, a commission is paid when an insurance policy is sold. That's pretty simple. And the commission is paid based off of the, in our world, the annual premium. So what that person is paying on that policy over the course of the year, we get paid an upfront commission for that. So let's just say for easy numbers that I want to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. Well, you need to look at what was the average size of the policies that I sold i.e. what is the average commission that I made on each policy. And then you'll divide that number into your goal income for this year. So again, let's just use easy numbers for simplicity. If I want to make $100,000 and I know that I make $100 in commission off of each product that I sell, then that means I need to sell 1,000 of those products this year. Great. Now break that into quarters. So that means I need to sell 250 per quarter. Let's break that down into months. What's a thousand divided by 12, like 90 something. So I need to sell 90 something policies per month to hit a thousand, which will ultimately get me to that hundred thousand dollar income. Then you break it down by week. What do I need to do per week? Well, what's a thousand divided by 52? What's that like 180? Um, no, that's not right. What's a thousand? We're gonna make this real simple. I'm just gonna get out my calculator. A thousand divided by 52 equals, <laughs> just a decimal off, 19 point something per week. And then you can literally break it down to what you need to do per day, right? So that would be a performance based goal or a results based goal. Well, then you also need to look at what are your activity based goals. So what are the activities that I need to do in order to sell 19 products per week? What are the activities that I need to do to sell those 250 products per quarter that will ultimately get me to my goal, which is making a hundred thousand dollars. There's a big difference between the activity-based goals and the results-based goals. The activities are those basic things in your business that you know you have to do to put yourself in a position to be able to sell your product. The results-based goals are the results-based goals. The activity-based goals, there's a little bit of ambiguity in there. There's a little bit of uncertainty in there because you can't control who's going to answer the phone. You can't control who's going to say yes when you get across the table from them, but you can control your activity level. So if you know that your conversion on average, again, let's use easy numbers is 50% and you need to sell 19 a week. That means you need to sit across the table from what is that? 38 people. You're going to need to sit across the table from 38 people in order to sell those 19 products or policies or whatever that may be. 
So then you need to look at your calls. How many calls does it take to get in front of 38 people? Hopefully you should be able to track those numbers. Hopefully you have tracked those numbers. You have an idea of what that may be. If not, you can use this first month. You can use this first quarter to really get that number. And I would say, weight it heavily on doing more than you think it is because it's always going to be more than you think it is, but you can start really developing a clear plan to where you can, uh, time block your day and know that, Hey, on Mondays I do calls. That's all I do. I'm not going to meet with anybody on Mondays. All I do Mondays is my prospecting calls or my, you know, knocking on doors or my, you know, walking into businesses. That's all I do on Monday. And I do this many of them. I do this many calls, 50 calls, a hundred calls, 150 calls. I walk into 50 businesses. I knock on 50 doors. I have 25 conversations like where someone answered the phone or someone answered the door or someone was there at the business, the decision maker that I could speak to. Those are the activity based goals. Tuesdays, I do this. I set up all my appointments for Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, whatever that looks like for your business. But you need to get crystal clear on the daily activities that it's going to take for you to sell what you need to sell for in order for you to make what you need to make. All that being said, if we're a week or so now into this, this year, and you haven't been doing those things, that doesn't mean you need to go back to having no plan. It does not mean you need to go back to the plan that you had last year or the routine that you were set in last year. You just jump right back in. You may have to jump right back in 50 times this year. Because we all know sales is tough. We all know sales. You go through these ups and downs, these peaks and valleys, and you just jump right back in, most importantly, to the activity-based goals, the activities that are going to get you the results that you're wanting. Caveat here, side note, don't let success keep you from the activity. Many times the worst thing that can happen to a salesperson is making a bunch of sales, right? Because if my goal is, let's just say like the example I just gave, if my goal is I only Monday, I only do calls, but let's just say we get a couple weeks into this year and because of those calls, you've generated a ton of appointments and you're generating a ton of sales. And, and with those sales, there may be paperwork and processing and customer service related type administrative type stuff that goes into that, that, that happens. And what can happen through that is all of a sudden you find yourself on the fifth, sixth Monday of, the, of this year and you're doing paperwork and you're processing sales that you've already made and you're following up on sales that you made last week. And what are you not doing? You're not doing the hundred calls. You're not knocking on the 50 doors. You're not walking into the 25 businesses, the things that you said activity based that you were going to do on Monday. And then what happens? All of a sudden, those sales you made, that's great. You got the commission coming in, income's looking great. Then all of a sudden, you look at your pipeline, you look at your appointments coming up, and it's all dried up. That's why success can sometimes be the biggest, biggest tar pit of your success. Or, yeah, success can be the biggest tar pit of your further success. So, you always have to do the basics. You always have to get back to what are those activity based goals? that are going to get me to where I need to go. And you just, you just don't deviate from it. And when you do, you jump right back in to those activities. You go right back in to those basics of your business so that you can always keep your funnel full so that you can always have a pipeline of people that you're meeting with. And you've got a pipeline weeks, maybe even months in advance for future money. A lot of times we look at this, uh, we have a phrase that we use in our business called now and later money. Like the now money is what I'm about to close this week. Like the now money is what I'm going to close this month. The later money is based on the activities that I'm also doing this week that I'm also doing this month that is set, setting me up for the money that will come later. You have to do both. You have to have the now activities and the later. 
Because if you don't, you'll be like, we call it porpoising. You'll come up to the surface, you'll have great success, and then you'll dive back down. You'll come up to the surface and you just don't want a year like that. You don't want this type of roller coaster year. You want a year that's has its peaks, but is pretty steady because the activity is there and the results are there and they coincide directly. So, you know, really looking at 2020, how clear are you with your goals? How clear are you with those activity based goals? Most importantly, and are you staying on track? If not, how do you get back on track quickly? It's going right back to those activity based goals. It's going right back to the basics of the things that you know will produce results in the future. Last thing I'll mention is don't let desperation deviate from your plan. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you go a couple of weeks and you haven't been on track, you haven't been doing the things that you're doing, you can be, you can easily turn into this mentality or, or transition into this mentality of like, oh crap, I need the now, 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 now. When in reality, you need to go back to those activities. You need to go back to those basics, which will create some now, but most importantly, it's going to create the money that's going to come later and later and later and later so that you won't experience what you're experiencing right now or what you might experience in the future. You don't want to experience that again. So at the end of the day, it's all about consistency. It's consistently following the plan. And if you look at this year, if you look at 2020 is how can I be the most consistent to the plan that I've put in place than I've ever been? And if that plan is clear and it's based on what is your end goal for the year, and it's based on what are those actual activities that are going to take me there, then being consistent in that plan is the only way that you're going to succeed. It's the only way you're going to hit that goal. You know, for us with our business, someone that is consistent, someone that's generating X number of policies for, for us in the insurance world, that's doing X number of policies. Let's say someone that's doing 50 policies a month, every single month is far more valuable than the person that does 150 policies in a month and disappears for a month, then does 75 and then disappears for a month, then does 200 and disappears for two months. The key is the consistency. How consistent can you be throughout the year? Not only will it give you success, but it'll give you peace of mind because it's less stressful when you're consistent. It's less stressful when you know the things that you have to do and you simply do them. The anxiety that's created in the, the time crunch when you feel like you're behind or you feel like, oh, I got to make something happen today. You may not realize it, but the person sitting across the table from you in that sales environment can sense every ounce of your desperation. When they can feel that this sale is like make or break for you, when they can feel like, man, you've like, you have to make this sale, they will be able to sense that. And it's going to, it's going to affect your conversion. It's going to affect that conversation. Nobody, nobody, nobody likes to be sold but people love to buy. So when they start feeling like they're being sold because you are a little bit desperate because you do need to get back in the game, people are going to sense that it's going to affect you. So the only way to combat that is by being consistent with those activities, which will create that consistent workflow, which creates that consistent conversion, the consistent income that we all want, but how do we get it? It's through this process sticking to a plan through the entire year. And when you get off track, jumping right back into those activities that have to be done to get you there. So with that, this is episode 151 of the sales wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!